Hello people, let us look at fungal infections of the sinuses, okay. So basically, we don't only call it as sinuses, we also call it as rhinosinusitis because even the nose mucosa is involved. So what is sinusitis? The inf inflammation of this uh, mucosa which is lining the sinus, right. So that is sinusitis. So it is invariably accompanied with uh, the uh, mucosa of the nose being involved. So it is also called as rhinosinusitis. If the fungus is the cause, then we will look at it in this video. Fungal infections of sinuses, okay. Many different species of fungi, they are found to involve the paranasal sinuses. So you know what the paranasal sinuses are, right. You know that we have the uh, frontal sinus, right. We have the frontal sinus, ethmoidal sinus, ethmoidal sinus and what is this? This is the maxillary sinus and behind, behind from lateral view you can see you have the spinoid sinus, okay. So, Many species of fungi are found to be in uh, infect this, okay, fungal sinusitis, you can say. Many species of fungi are found to involve paranasal sinuses, which and all you should know, aspergillus, then alternaria, mucor or rhizopus, okay. So, what else is written here? They may involve single or multiple sinuses. Four different varieties of fungal infections are seen, okay. Four different varieties we will see in the next slide. So basically what are the organisms that are causing guys? Aspergillus, alternaria, mucor or rhizopus, right. So at least these names you have to know. Let us look at this photo here. Aspergillus, so it is showing the hyphae. Septate hyphae with acute angle branching and what is this one? Gomori, Gomori, methenamine, silver stain. Okay. So everything is the same. Aspergillus only they are showing here. Okay. So they have septate hyphae. Hyphae means what guys? Something like this. Some branching like they will have right. Septate hyphae. Okay. So, what are the fungus you have to mention? Aspergillus, alternaria, mucor or rhizopus. Okay. If you remember our mycology introduction, we have seen these fungi. Where is uh, the one we are talking about? Aspergillus. So, it is a mold. It is having hyphae. Yes. So, what else they are talking about here? Alternaria. Then the other one is? Mucor or rhizopus, so that is here, rhizopus and mucor. So we have already seen this, aspergillus causes aspergillosis. In aspergillus itself, you have so many types, aspergillus, flavus, fumigatus, niger, etc. So if you have, rem if you remember in microbiology, you have studied this. So basically, mucor will not have rhizoids, right? And rhizopus will have rhizoids and stolons. Mucor will not have both of these, that's all, that's the only difference. So, we can kind of put these as separate, okay, mucor or rhizopus, okay. Then, what are the four variety? Four variety of the fungal infections are fungal ball, allergic fungal sinusitis, chronic invasive sinusitis, fulminant fungal sinusitis, okay. What is the meaning of this word fulminant? It is severe and sudden kind of a thing, okay. Severe and sudden also. Two, two things they are writing here. So, it is kind of acute onset. So, this one is chronic. After that, they are mentioning this fulminant. Acute presentation it is. So, in people who are immunocompromised or diabetic people, this can happen. Okay. So, this usually happens because of mucor or aspergillus. Now, let us look at each of these. So, let us start with the fungal ball. So, fungal ball. See, uh, one thing you should understand here. This one, fulminant, what did we say? Immunocompromised, right? But this fungal ball is people who are fine, absolutely fine, okay? In, in a healthy sinus, these fungus will implant, okay? So basically healthy sinus, fungus will implant, okay? So what will you see in CT? In CT, you will see hyper dense area okay there is no evidence of bone erosion 
or expansion. So there's just a ball there kind of a thing, right? So maxillary sinus will be most involved, okay? So just remember other sinuses also can be involved, but maxillary sinus, this one, here what will you see? A hyper dense area. There is no evidence of bone erosion or expansion, right? So how will you treat this? Obviously just remove the fungal ball. If uh, required, you will drain the sinus, right? So you can see here the sinus is full of some secretions, the yellow ones. So it can be drained if required. So you don't need to do anything else. They're saying even antifungal therapy is not required. Interesting. So that is about fungal ball. Just one ball of fungus sitting there. Nothing else happening. Okay. Now let us move on to this one. Allergic fungal sinusitis. So this is an allergic reaction according to the name itself. So because of what? Because of fungus. So, the, how will this person present with sin, sinonasal polyposis and mucin? So, some kind of polyp growths, polyps, right? So, these growths will be there. What kind of growths? Sinus, sinonasal polyposis. So, sinus also, nasal also, polyps and mucin, okay? So, uh, these uh, the mucin contains eosinophils, charcot laden crystals and fungal hyphae. Obviously, whatever mucin will be there. What will be there in that? The fungal hyphae. Always for fun you can mention this, okay? The hyphae. You can mention. Again here, what will you see in CT? Hyperdense area only. But here you will see mucosal thickening, expansion of the sinus, bone erosion due to pressure, okay? All this you can see. But no fungal invasion they are seeing. What is the treatment for allergic fungal sinusitis? Endoscopic clearance, right? This is, you have heard this so many times. Sinusitis means first thing people will say is endoscop endoscopic surgical clearance of the sinuses with provision of drainage and ventilation, okay? Pre-operative, post-operative, they'll give some steroids also. This is kind of weird because it is allergic reaction. That's why they're giving steroids, okay? Kind of, but this is combined with pre- and post-operative systemic steroids, okay? So what and all will be there here? Some keywords, let's write. So basically this is allergic that you will write, right? So what are all is that? Sinus, nasal, polyposis, mucin. The latter contains eosinophils. So mucin should be containing what? Eosinophils. Charcot laden crystals, right? Then what else did you, can you remember? Fungal hyphae, don't ever forget this. Fungal hyphae, fungal hyphae, fungus means fungal hyphae only, you will see, no. Then, there is no invasion of sinus mucosa with fungus. So, there is no fungal invasion, it is there only, inside only, there is no invasion from the fungus. What will you see in the CT scan? They are saying it can be uh, one sinus is involved or all the sinuses are involved or both sides are involved, all that you will write, okay. CT scan, what will you see? Same thing, hyper dense area you say, then you say, Mucosal thickening, okay, all this you will write. Then what is that? There can be bone erosion, sinus expansion, but fungus will, is not invading, okay. The mucosa, the, there is no invasion of the sinus mucosa with fungus. That is the only thing it has paired this person with. What will they do? Surgical treatment, endoscopic, clear the sinus, drainage, ventilation, give pre-operative, post-operative steroids. Okay. Endoscopic surgical clearance. Okay. Drainage, ventilation, all that you will write. Pre and post-operative steroids. Okay. Drainage. And what else is this? Ventilation. Okay. Now let's move on to the next one. Chronic invasive sinusitis. The name itself is saying guys, it is going to be invasive. Unlike the others, right? Now there is invasion. So now let's move on to that one. Chronic invasive sinusitis. Okay. How is it going people? So what and all we finished? We finished fungal ball, allergic fungal sinusitis. Now we are moving on to the third one that is chronic invasive sinusitis. So here the fungus invades the sinus mucosa as the name suggests. There is bone erosion. So bone erosion was there in previous one also but bone erosion there was because of the pressure. So that is bone erosion due to pressure. Here bone erosion due to invasion. 
Okay, there is fungal invasion here. Fungal invasion of sinus mucosa is there. Bone erosion, right? Due to the invasion, right? So, what is this condition? Chronic. So, the patient will present with chronic rhinosinusitis. What will you see in CT scan? This is a chronic condition, CT scan. Thickened mucosa with opacification of sinus and bone erosion. So, you will see here bone erosion. <clears throat> Thickened mucosa. Right? Opacification of sinus. So, sinus have become opaque. Normally, how should the sinus be guys? They should be air filled. So, but here the sinus are opacified, bone erosion you can see, patient may have intracranial or intraorbital invasion. So now, so there can be intracranial invasion, intraorbital invasion, right? Histopathology, what will you see? Fungal invasion of submucosa, granulomatous reaction with multinucleated giant cells. This is a chronic condition, so you will see granulomatous reaction, right? So they are doing histopathology also. So here what are they saying? There is intracranial or intraorbital invasion. Histopathology will show what? Invasion of submucosa by what? By the fungus <coughs> granulomatous reaction with what will you see? Giant cells, multinucleate giant cells. Okay, so this is the chronic invasive sinusitis here the fungus is invading the mucosa because of which there is bone erosion in the CT scan you will see the bone erosion you will see that the sinuses are opacified there is thickened mucosa this is a chronic condition there can be intracranial invasion intraorbital invasion and histopathology you will see that the fungus has invaded the submucosa and granulomatous reaction multinucleate giant cells so histopathology, let's say this is the mucosa, submucosa and all that. So fungus would have invaded the submucosa and you will see granulomas. What will you see in granulomas? You will see giant cell with multinucleus. Now let us move on to the last one, fulminant. Fulminant, fulminant fungal sinusitis. We already told you about this. This is severe, sudden and it happens only in immunocompromised or diabetic individuals. Right, so basically... Here, who is mostly uh, working? Mucor, okay, aspergillus, these are the ones that like to come here, uh, cause this condition. Mucor causes rhinocerebral disease, okay, this is getting scary now. Mucor is causing what? Rhinocerebral disease, nose to the brain. Because it invades the blood vessels, the mucor fungus causes ischemic necrosis presenting as a black s -char. Involving inferior turbinate, palate, palate or the sinus. It spreads to the face, eyes. Wait. So what are all are they saying? Invasion of blood vessels. So there will be ischemic necrosis. It spreads to the face, the eye, base of skull, brain. So this is the rhinocerebral disease. What is doing all this? Mucor. Okay. So treatment, they will do surgical debridement of necrotic tissue and they will give you an antifungal amphotericin B, IV amphotericin B. Okay. Now coming to aspergillus, this is also not very goody goody. It can cause acute fulminant sinusitis with tissue invasion. Such press, oh, so what is it causing? Acute fulminant sinusitis, that is there in the name itself, fulminant sinusitis. These people will present with acute sinusitis. They will develop sepsis. Oops. Sepsis. Okay. Other sinus complications. So here there is no black S char in aspergillus. So black S char is in this mucor. Black S char. Is there in what? Mucor. Okay. Again, what is the treatment here? Surgery and antifungal therapy. Same thing. For all these things they are telling surgery and antifungal therapy. So that is all about the fungal Infection of sinusitis, sinuses. Now let us take a recap guys. How is it going? Shall we take a quick recap and close this video?
So, fungus, what and all are the species that infect? Aspergillus, Alternaria, Mucor, Rhizopus. So, they can cause fungal ball, allergic fungal sinusitis, chronic invasive sinusitis, fulminant or uh, that is uh, fungal sinusitis. Fulminant is mainly immunocompromised people, remember. Fungal ball, the, there is no problem with the sinus. Sinus looks healthy. The only problem is that there is a ball sitting there, hyperdense area. That is the only thing it doesn't even invade. Now, allergic fungal sinusitis, there is hyperdense uh, area, etc. The mucosa is thick, but the uh, there is no invasion, okay. But the bone erosion happens because of this pressure, because the sinus is expanding, okay. Then what else you should know here, sinonasal polyposis, because it's allergic, you can write all these words, sinonasal polyposis, mucin, which has the eosinophils, charcot laden crystals, fungal hyphae. So basically how will you treat this, because it is allergic, they are giving steroids. Now chronic invasive uh, sinusitis, but uh, you know, they say that uh, steroids will lead to fungal infection, but here they are saying, they are giving it as a treatment, interesting. Now coming to chronic invasive sinusitis, what did we see in chronic invasive sinusitis? Here there is invasion of the sinus mucosa, there is bone aeration because of this invasion. This is a chronic condition, in the CT scan you will see that this uh, bone erosion is there, right? <clears throat> there can be intracranial, intraorbital invasion because it is an invading type, it is invading. So it will go to intracranial, intraorbital. Histopathology you will see it would have invaded the submucosa. Granulomatous reaction because it's a chronic condition, multinuclear giant cells. So this is very easy to remember. It's chronic, so chronic, granulomatous, uh, invasive, invasive, intracranial invasion, intraorbital invasion, invasion of submucosa, all invasion, invasion, invasion words you have to write off as simple as that. Okay. Fulminant sudden severe fungal sinusitis. Where does it happen in immunocompromised people or diabetic people? Here what is happening, uh, especially the mucor and aspergillus are causing this. What is mucor doing? It is doing rhinocerebral disease. There can be black estuary in mucor. In aspergillus, no black estuary. It can cause sepsis. All these how you will treat? Surgery, antifungal. Antifungal they are telling about in fulminant, right? Chronic, what did they say the treatment is? They have not mentioned the treatment in the textbook for chronic. Okay, so that's all about um, fungal infection of sinuses. Hope you have understood uh, fungal sinusitis. Bye-bye.